Go ahead. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good, Good you. to see you. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming along Hi. today for the uh, pre-match press conference ahead of tomorrow's big, big game against Bayern Munich. We're all looking forward to that. I'm delighted to have uh, right at the end our manager of Liverpool, Jurgen Klopp, and new, new vice captain. Trent Alexander-Arnold. Now, we're going to be passing the microphone around. If you have a question, just raise your hand. Lovely people from Full Circle will hand you the microphone. Uh, please state your name, your organization, and try and limit your questions to Liverpool, the football club, their pre-season tour, and tomorrow's big match against Bayern Munich. James, off you go. Thanks so much. Um, Jürgen, just to start with, why, why Trent for the vice captaincy when you decide that? Um, I can imagine that in a situation like that, that um, and for a club like Liverpool, speculations are high. And, and um, the good thing about this team is that we have obviously plenty of options for being for the captaincy and for the vice captaincy. So long about it, and um, I really thought um, Trent is ready for that. Yes, I know him now since seven years, I think. Um, so I'm growing, so I'm developing as a man, as a player, and as a man. And um, it's clear that in a club like this, um, you need a specific DNA, and if not him, who could have that? And it was always clear that it, we are not since he's 18 in these kind of conversations, but um, he knows how I value him. him and um, we had the similar conversations, I <laughs> a similar uh, conversation about that in the past. And it was always clear about timing, so we didn't think, both didn't think that it will, that we have to think about that this year. Um, but now it was the situation, and it was for me not a difficult one. It's uh, not against anybody else, not at all. It's a decision for Trent, and um, yeah, I can imagine for a boy from Liverpool, from West Derby, um, and his family, it's a big thing. Um, but it's not because of that. It's because of the personality, and um, well, I think he likes it, and uh, I think he deserves it. That's it. Trent, there's a lovely clip of Jürgen coming across to you in training and to tell you about this new position. What, what was that like, that conversation for you? Um. I mean, at first, I, think it, I thought he was going to tell me to stop giving the ball away. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was, a, it was a lovely surprise, to be honest. It was not one that I was expecting in that moment. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought we would, we would have a conversation around that, that sort of thing at some point, but not in that moment. So it was, it was you know, it was special. Um, it was, and um, that was a moment I'll remember. Did you feel like you're ready to take on more responsibility? Step up and what does it mean? You've been at the club since you were a young boy. What does it mean to you? You must be a source of massive pride. Yeah, no, of of course I feel ready. I feel um, I feel like without being, you know, being put in this position, I felt like I've I've been a leader and I lead by example with the things I do um, on a daily basis in training and in and around the the lads. And I think the lads see me as someone in in a, in a leadership role. Um, I'm happy the manager and the staff see that too, um, but that's my mentality. Is um, you know I want to lead by example. I want to make sure that you know I take responsibility for what I do and and how the team performs as well. So um, you know it's an amazing position to be in, um, but like like you said, there's more responsibility on making sure that we we succeed and we achieve the things we want to this season. What do you think about the choice of Virgil as captain? Makes makes complete sense. Um, you know, captain of his of his country. I think there was there was many candidates for it. I think that's an amazing thing to have. Um, I'm sure it gave the manager a lot of headaches. Um, but those are the kind of headaches that are a good headache. So I think it's a it's a it's a good decision. He's someone who you know is used to being in a leadership role and will obviously step up. He's got big shoes to fill in, and obviously Hendo. Um, he was an amazing captain, um, but I'm sure Virgil will will follow that and you know do it in his own way, and you know we'll we'll all follow him in in the direction he leads us to. Uh, Tobi Hatschiffer from Sportbild in Germany. I have one question to you. Uh, Saudi Mani has uh, left Bayern Munich and is playing now in Saudi Arabia. From your point of view, what went wrong with uh, Saudi in Munich and? How does Saudi Arabia influence the football market in general now, nowadays? Yeah, no. um, so it's official, but it's Sadio, official, that he leaves. 
video from the team check. Oh, okay. It's so automatically checked then. Okay. <laughs> Looks like. Um, I don't know what went wrong, to be honest. I think Sadio, when Sadio left us, he left us um, on a high, um, in a really good shape, world class player, no shadow of a doubt. Um, I think we cannot ask anybody in the club who would say exactly that. Um, but new environment, new, uh, a new situation, new expectations, maybe. You don't know. I, I didn't speak to Sadio about it. We didn't. We had contact, but not in this kind of manner. Um, and so, how it is sometimes is in football. Uh, so, um, to fulfill your full potential, I think everything has to um, fall in place, pretty much. A um, bit of luck is helpful as well, and that was obviously not the case. A lot of offside goals, which we all know in football, they don't count. Uh, but it still shows you that uh, the things are pre pretty much right. In the more than a bad injury, you know, a horrible moment, World Cup was gone. So um, we all knew that that um, will have an influence because Sadio is a, a very proud man, uh, and that he couldn't be uh, lead his team, his, his 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 country to the World Cup was brutal for him, definitely. So, but that's it. And the influence of Saudi Arabia, we'll see. I don't know. But in the moment, it looks as that's quite influence. It's massive in the moment. Um, I think um, pretty much the worst thing is that uh, the transfer window in Saudi Arabia, Arabia is three weeks longer open. If I'm right, I heard something like that, then at least in Europe. Um, that's not helpful. So there must be UEFA, FIFA must find solutions for that. Um, but in the end, I don't know in this moment what exactly will happen. It is already influential for us, for sure. Um, but we will have to learn to deal with it, and that's what we do. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all I can say about it. Time will show. Hi, Deepan. Yeah, hi, Deepan from The Straits Times. I yeah, just want to ask you your expectations of your team for the friendly match against Bayern Munich. Uh, and so far in pre-season, you know, have you been satisfied with what you've seen from your team so far? What more do you expect from them? Yeah, for sure the most difficult game tomorrow, definitely. We saw a few pictures from uh, the previous games of Bayern against um, Kawasaki and um, against Man City. So, Bayern traditionally a really good team. Um, they have four world-class centre-halves, two world-class midfield pairings, up front speed and everything, um, and technique, finishing skills. Um, so uh, that looks quite impressive, to be honest. But good, we wanted a strong opponent, we have a strong opponent. So this is definitely the toughest test for us in this preseason. But um, that's what you need in this moment. Um, yeah, I'm excited uh, to see uh, where we are, what we, how we can adapt to the quality of the opponent, because that's part of football. Um, we, from the first day since we are back, um, I try to make really clear that um, our defending has to be a completely different level to the last season, um, and we will better do that tomorrow. Otherwise, we get. Um, uh, uh, real problems and that's why I'm really looking forward to it, knowing top class opponent, but I think it makes sense that we will give it a try. The gentleman on the left. <laughs> so, uh, hi again. Hi. Tim Kreft uh, from Sandheim's Run. Um, so how excited are you against the long time rival Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga? And um, what, uh, what is the biggest importance for clubs like Liverpool and Bayern Munich to do an Asian tour? in their uh, pre-season? Yeah, long ago that I saw Bayern as rivals, to be honest. It's not really I'm in my eighth season. Or in, from in October, it's eight years and I'm gone. So you cannot keep these things up for so long. And I always think, oh, we have to be Bayern, we have to be Bayern. We met them since then twice in the Champions League. Um, so that's it. Um, and so that's not there anymore. Um, Asia tours are, I don't know exactly what it means to Bayern, but it means to us that we have come closer to our to our fan base, uh, to parts of our fan base, massive fan base. You can see it here, it's, it's unbelievable. People um, have 
tents or whatever, or camping things in, in front of our hotel, um, uh, sleep there and wait for us every day. And um, the game tomorrow will be sold out. It's not only because of us. I know about the size of Bayern and the importance in Asia as well. So from time to time, as uncomfortable it is for the weather reasons and the travel reasons, we have to show up. We have to show up here. We have to show up in US and other parts of the world, just um, because we can't expect from the people all the time that they follow us everywhere, especially on, in front of television from time to time we have to show um, that we are humans, that you can um, get hold of us, that you can touch us, that you can get autographs if, if it's possible. All these things are important. It's just a um, give and take and in this um, case. And so we are, how is that, with all the complications what we have uh, when you do a travel trip like that, we are really happy to be here. We're happy to go home again as well because then we feel the, the English weather again and, um, and can prepare for the season. But um, it's nice anyway, all the stuff. And I, I'm really happy because kind of a character education for the team as well. It's like um, you have to do all this stuff. This morning we were again appearances and you have to do a lot of the boys have to do a lot of things. But that's really important to know where it's all coming from and why we earn that much and all these kind of things. From time to time, we really have to properly feel it. And here you feel it definitely. It's hard work for the boys, but it's pre-season, so it's fine. Uh, gentlemen at the, uh, at the back, in the back. It's been trans, if that's OK. Um, there's very few lads from Liverpool who can say they've even played for the club. Uh, there's even fewer who vice captain as well as won a Champions League and a league medal and everything else. You know, obviously a player who looks forward and you want to achieve still so much, but I'm wondering if you allowed yourself a little moment yesterday to reflect on everything that you have achieved to, to you know, lead up to this announcement. Um, I mean, it's difficult because, like, like, like I said, um, it's it's a busy time for us. But um, that was a moment. I put in a lot of hard work up into this moment to to reach these kind of of milestones. Um, and you know, it is a it is a moment where, you know, I've reflected and thought. I'm proud of myself, and um, no, it it's made me smile, and I've been um, very happy. It takes happy. something <laughs> to make him smile. <laughs> yeah, it takes a lot to make me smile. Um, but no, it's you know, I've 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 never been shy of of saying what my ambitions are, um, and that's always been to to captain this club. Um, and this is, you know, a, a, a pathway and a, a stepping stone to that. And I think, um, you know, it's a role and a responsibility that I'm, I'm really looking forward to and I can't wait to, you know, get started and get the season started and hopefully achieve the things that we want to. Thank you. Our last two questions. A uh, question for Trent, please. Um, how much are you enjoy playing in that midfield role, whether it's um, starting there or sort of tucked in? And are there any midfielders, past or present, that you may watch videos of and try and base your game upon to improve that? Um, yeah, first of all, I think I think it's clear to see that I enjoy playing being there. Um, obviously, um, yeah, since. You know the transition or the the slight change and the ad adaptation. You know I felt like it's brought the best out of me again, um, and it's something I'm excited to to play. You know there's a lot of work that that's went into it, and there's still a lot more that that needs to happen um, to really iron out the creases in it. But you know we're working on that. That's what preseason's for, and um, you know we're excited as a team. I'm excited for the season to start. Um, in, in this system, making it work, new players um, and having to adapt to it and make it work is, and having to think about it whilst playing and off the pitch too and study it and learn is something that I enjoy. Um, so, you know, this role is something that will definitely bring the, the best out of me, whether it's starting in there or, or transitioning into the, the when, when in possession. For me, it's just getting in those areas to impact the game, affect the game, and use the, the skill set that I've got to help the team win the game. Um, so, yeah, and in terms of, of players, who are, I've always admired, you know, quality passes of the ball. Um, I grew up watching 
you know, Steven Gerrard, Javi Alonso. So I was very fortunate um, in that respect. Um, so yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a student of the game. I love watching football. It's not, you know, I don't sit there every weekend and think, you know, with my notepad and thinking what can I learn. It's more just watching it and just picking things up as it goes. Um, and when I do need to, to study it, then then I'll go and do that. But you know, I enjoy the game. I I love watching it. I love being in and around it. And um, I think that helps with with how I learn and, and how I adapt. And you, we saw um, Curtis in that number six role the other day. Um, what are your thoughts on him in that position? Is that something that we might see quite a lot of in the coming weeks and months? In this actual setup, how we have it and how the squad looks, um, he is one of the options, definitely. I think it's not a secret that we are still looking for, for, um, for players joining us, but um, that's one thing. And the other thing is using what you have, and I think Curtis can absolutely play that position. So, can he play it when nobody else is defending in the team? No. No chance. But then I don't know any player who could play it then. And um, but if you really understand the situation, how it is in this moment, means that an, a, a, a proven six is not available in the moment. Do we make an excuse of that and say, okay, well, how can we do that then? Then we have a problem because during the season a lot of things can happen. It was always the case. If you see it as a challenge and if you see it as a, a, a positive challenge, it's try to find a way to be compact anyway or even more so and to 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 find a way to deny the opponent um, and now world-class opponent tomorrow, obviously. Um, if you do that together, it's always possible. And in possession, there's no doubt that Curtis can have a massive impact from that position. I think his development um, in the last few months, since he's with us, is, is really remarkable. Hold back by some, um, especially by the last injury, which was really not helpful. Wrong moment, too long, everything. Um, nobody's fault, but it has happened with young players. Um, and before that, the steps he made were really good. For his young age, he played for Liverpool already in incredible games, but was not stable until a year ago or so. Then bad injury, and he might look stable, and the, 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 the Euros gave him for sure confidence. Um, and so, yeah, having him on the pitch is makes sense. Uh, in his position, uh, if nobody else is there, he can play that definitely. We can take one last question from Deepa. Yeah, question for you, Jürgen. Um, based on your current assessment of the squad, and I understand a club the size of Liverpool, you always want to fight for top ambitions, whether, whether it's in the league or in Europe. But based on your current assessment of the squad and what other clubs like Arsenal are doing in the market, do you think Liverpool have what it takes to fight for the title for the coming season? If not, what do Liverpool need? There's no if not. Nobody knows that. We, uh, we need points a lot a lot of points in that league um, and I think we are able to win football games so that's all I need and from that from that you go um, yes and a club of the size of Liverpool has to be successful there's no doubt about that um, otherwise you need to, the club needs to find different solutions these kind of things always the same was never different will always be the same um, but um, we are uh, nobody besides maybe City can have the real target to become champion again this year and all the other teams fight for Champions League and that's what we do as well and um, then the earlier you qualify for the Champions League and the, the further up you are there if you're second and in, in, in striking distance to, to first then you might have a chance but I don't know who will be there in a the moment there are a lot of expectations a lot of speculations but for us it's um, not about that for us it's about the game tomorrow then Darmstadt at Preston and then Chelsea. That's the, the games I'm, I, I'm thinking about. Um, and after that, we will see. Each game is will have a result. Each game will us give um, information. And um, we have to, what I said before, um, which is as important as have getting the best players together, is uh, that you create an, an atmosphere and spirit, um, a desire, common desire, common spirit, common atmosphere that we really can use as a basis to be the best possible season for us, whatever that means. And if we do that, I have a feeling that we are, will be in a good place and will have a good season, but there's a lot of work to do. All right, thank you very much for coming along here in the trip. Thank you for joining us. At the thank you very much. Good luck tomorrow, and we'll see you all again tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. See you.